don't use a travel agent. So no. there's going to be going to be some people that will use a travel agent because they might be time poor and they don't know what they're doing. But if you book online and travel it, and book it yourself, you're going to save a lot of money. So what you've got to understand with the travel agents is that you're paying for their expertise for them to organise your trip. You're also paying for commission on top of the price. So when you get that quote from them, it's going to include all that. So if you can do it, to be fair, it takes a bit of extra research and planning and, and organisation. But once you've done it once and you um, see all the cost savings, you'll never go back. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Perpetual Motion with Dr. Mo Anderson. This is a podcast focused on lifestyle, self-care, personal empowerment, and positive relationships. I'm your host, Dr. Mo Anderson best-selling author, TEDx speaker, award-winning podcast host, and speaker coach. My goal for every episode is to help you elevate, educate, and be motivated so that you can be your best self personally and professionally. I'm all about continuous personal improvement. If you're new to the show or a returning visitor, let's make this official. Hit that subscribe button now so that you'll be alerted to every new weekly free episode. You can't say Dr. Mo ain't tell ya you that fear magnifies the consequences of failure. What are you scared of? Why are you afraid? I'd rather live like I'm dying than live to die any day. My heart is pure and my soul is safe. Hey, my guest today is Globetrotter Linda King. She is an author, seasoned travel, traveler, travel writer, and founder of the Smart Travelista. She used to be a travel agent and a banker, so she knows a lot about how to save money before and while traveling. We're also going to talk about safety during travel, especially if you're going solo. So if you've got the travel bug, even if you're a seasoned traveler, stay tuned. You can learn a lot from Linda King, the Travelista. All right. Welcome, Linda. Hi, Dr. Mo. How are you? I am well. I am well. It's nice to have you on the on this episode, on this podcast from Down Under, are you in, I, I can't, help me remember, I've had several guests from Australia. I think you're in Melbourne. I'm in Melbourne, originally from Sydney, but living in Melbourne. Okay, delightful, delightful. Let's jump right into this. Everybody, now that we're, you know, able to move around a bit and borders are open. People have dusted off their passports. I got in a couple of trips this year. I know you're back actively traveling. So let's just jump right in and talk about how this all started. When did you first get the travel bug? Well, I've had it since a child. So I was really lucky. My parents took me and my brother around Australia on a road trip when we were quite young. And we saw most of Australia and it was such a mind-blowing experience to do that as a child mm -hmm. and it really opened up the world to me. Um, so when I got a bit older, I thought, I've got to do this travel. How am I going to do this travel? So I ended up getting into the travel industry um, and, you know, obviously had the benefits around that. Mm -hmm. And pr pretty much the rest is history. I've been travelling ever since. Um, it's a big passion of mine and I just think travelling, seeing the world is just amazing opportunity. I agree with you. I agree. Do you do you know, are you one of those who count how many countries you've been to at this point? Yes, yes. I know I've been to 31 countries and I'm adding to that list next year in 2023. But yeah, so 31 countries so far. That's, that's amazing. That's that's pretty <laughs> exciting. And I'm looking forward to you sharing some of your tips that you've gotten along the way about how to save money on on travel. What made mm -hmm. you go from and and you know you you make a great point about parents introducing you to travel because I think a lot of times parents will go and leave the kids with the grandparents or whatever but it's like everything mm -hmm. else getting that exposure gives you an appetite for it. And um 
So here you are now, a professional traveler. What what are your top tips on how to save money on travel? Is it is it travel agents, travel clubs, or is it it just plan early? What what are your thoughts on that? So there's a number of tips. So um, I've been a travel agent, so I sort of know quite a few of the tips. But Mm -hmm. um, what I would say, if you can, don't use a travel agent. So there's going to be going to be some people that will use a travel agent because they might be time poor and they don't know what they're doing. But if you book online and travel and book it yourself, you're going to save a lot of money. So what you got to understand with the travel agents is that you're paying for their expertise for them to organise your trip. And you're also paying for commission on top of the price. So when you get that quote from them, it's going to include all that. So if you can do it, um, and, and to be fair, it takes a bit of extra research and planning and, and organisation, but once you've done it once and you um, see all the cost savings, you'll never go back. So that's probably my big one of my big tips. Also, what I would say is book ahead and prepay. So if you can, and, you know, obviously it depends on when you know when your, your annual leave is, mm-hmm. but if you can book ahead of time, that actually will get your bargains as well as far as the travel. Um, also prepay. So with the prepaying, you're paying for it in your own local currency ahead of time. So you know what you're up for in your budget. If you wait to pay for it when you get there, you've got to think of, you've got those currency conversions involved. So it might be US dollars to say euro, and that's actually going to cost you more money. Right. So that's another way. Um, what I would say also travel in low and shoulder seasons. So they're usually not the, the times of the year that people like to travel in because it's usually a bit colder um, and it's not as nice. So everyone loves traveling in summertime, but that's when your your peak time is and you're right. gonna pay the, you're gonna pay top money because it's when the demand is higher. So if you go in at an air a time that's lower demand and lower season, you're also gonna save some money. Um another thing, um, as I mentioned about the exchange rate. Look at the exchange rate of the place you're going to. So keep an eye on the exchange rate. So say you're going to Europe and you might be looking at the euro. Mm -hmm. If the US dollar, so if I'm talking about if you're an American, if the US dollar rallies against the euro, you might be worth actually getting some of that money ahead of time. Because when you travel, whatever you've secured that euro at what rate is what you're going to be paying when you go over there, irrespective of what the currency rate is when you get there. Okay. So it's, it's around the planning and um, organisation, my really big tip around also saving money is airline loyalty points. Mm-hmm. So yes. build that those points. You, yes. So that, that saved me a lot of money over the years, but you've got to have a strategy around that. So it's, you either do it, go all in, or don't do it at all is my my um, suggestion about that. So it's about planning your lifestyle, planning your finances around that those loyalty points, and you're going to get the most benefit out of the program. Okay, you said a you said a lot of good things there, and I just have a couple of questions on the on the prepay. I'm assuming mm-hmm. you're not talking about the. Uh, airfare or are you meaning the airfare and the lodging to prepay everything so pay for the airfare accommodation might be touring might be car book it all pay for it all before you arrive well the the it seems like the prices fluctuate so much on those um i think that's probably some people's fear but historically i guess the closer you get to the to the date of your trip, the higher they're going to be. So for people who are worried about, well, if I prepay, what if the prices drop? Are you saying that's mm-hmm. highly unlikely that the prices are going to drop? So it depends on the demand. Mm-hmm. So if there's a lot of demand, it's unlikely that the prices are going to drop. Um, but you can do go either way. You can either plan it ahead or you can fly by the seat of your pants and do it really, really close to when you travel. Mm-hmm. Um, the risk that you take with that, though, is that potentially the prices are going to be more expensive. Um, but it just depends. So 
for me, what I try and do, I do a combination of the both. I don't book nine months in advance. I don't book one month in advance. I sort of just keep an eye on, on what's happening with the prices mm-hmm. um, and then make a decision and go, you know what, at this point I think we're not going to get it any cheaper. Let's go with, with, with this. But, you know, everyone's different, obviously, what they yeah. want to do. And it depends on when you, you when you can secure those holidays too. Like you might not know until you know, two months or a month beforehand that they're, your employer is actually going to let you have that whole, those holidays. So Right, because if you're not self-employed and entrepreneur, if you're in, in corporate America, you don't always have, you know, you cannot always get those days off that far in advance or it could it could change on you, which I think mm. is some people's fear as well is that they won't be able to go and they've already prepaid. But one of the mm. things that happened with me during 2020 is that I had several trips book. I typically travel quite a bit domestically and and try to do at least one trip, you know, overseas or internationally when I can. But then the airline started this thing of not giving you a refund. They were just giving you credits. And really that was horrible. I wanted my mm-hmm. I wanted my money back because like I said, it was it was an unusual year that I had several trips booked for speaking engagements and things. And I'm still mm-hmm. trying to, you know, use all of those credit. So for people concerned about that, that if I prepay and we have another situation where they can't travel, what would you say to them about that that fear that I might just lose my money or end up with credits? So you've got to keep an eye on the credits because I had some of those as well. And it's just about knowing the validity of the credits. So it's about keeping contact with your airline or, or you know, if it's a hotel credit, find out and, and really understand the terms and conditions. So there's been a real, um, after COVID's finished, there's been a real push with the airlines to use your credits. So mm-hmm. they're very proactive about using them so you don't lose them. Um, but it's everyone's individual circumstance, really. Um, the credits, you're better off using them because, again, that's money you've paid out already. You don't want right. to be laying out any extra money. So, yeah, but it just depends on the circumstance and everyone's individual And then also you talked about um, just going ahead and booking it yourself, not using a travel agent. I think a lot of people are fearful. I mean, I've had this happen in the U.S. that I've booked somewhere and the the pictures (laughs) online are Mm. nothing like what it is when I when I got there. And I'm going to say this was when I was younger and having to stay in some places that I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't stay in now, but, mm. you know, sometimes they're they're a little deceptive with their advertising. So when you're talking about, and I think people listening to this uh, will be particularly interested in, you know, traveling great distances somewhere. How do, how do you, are you, do you recommend, I, I know you've got a website and, and we'll give that link where you give tips. Are there a specific sites that you go through? to book it yourself where where they're you know pretty upfront about the places and the ratings or are you do you just look directly for hostels or hotels or you know and do it that way so what I do before I book anything um in a hotel I will go and check out the reviews online Mm. and I'll go to a number of review sites and what I'm really looking for I zone in on the negative reviews mm-hmm. because some of the, the positive ones can be planted there by the hotels and, uh, and other two companies so what I try and do is the one that's got the most reviews and the biggest percentage of, of good reviews or sort uh-huh. of average reviews but also look at the negative reviews because they're being honest about what's happened so it, it's, it's also good to know um, and then you make a decision based on that so again do a bit of research on those review websites um with flights I know what I'm doing I, I know the airline that I'm traveling with so I, you, you know it's a, it's a no-brainer with that right um and, and the same with touring so if you're going on tours I'll also do reviews on on that company um on that tour and, and just really zone in on the negative because they're going to be the truthful um you know some of the positive ones are truthful too but you really get the proper picture when you look at the more average and negative reviews on on places got it what about um 
when you get there, if you're not with a tour, do you recommend getting local guides or just, you know, using Google or, or whatever app you have to make your way around? What do you think is best for that? So um, one thing that's really increasing in popularity is the free w- walking tours. Mm-hmm. So I try and go, if I haven't been to the place, I'll go on a free walking tour. Um, and the beauty of that is you give them a donation at the end. It's a free tour, which is also good for the cost saving. But they're locals, so they know exactly the best places to go in that city. And you, what I do is I ask them a lot of questions. And I go, where's the best place to shop? Where's the place to do this? And they're so honest and open about things. And they love it. They love people asking them questions. So firstly, I'll say, I'll find out, has that city got a free walking tour? Then I'll do it. Um, What I do, again, it's part of the research before I go. I work out what I'm going to do while I'm there. So I love shopping. So shopping, I I do a lot of research on. Um, But I also like doing walking and, 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 you know, a bit of tourist attractions and all that sort of stuff. So it's in the research. And so I, I'm not going to have a really set itinerary, but I'll have each day planned with something that I think I'll do, and that might change when I get there. Okay. Um, but, yeah, at, at least, you know, and then obviously you can have day tours as well, which are really excellent. So, you know, if you're staying in a place and you might want to go into a different country, you get a day tour and they'll take you there and then they'll take you back. So you've got that security also. So it just depends on where I'm travelling to. One, have I been there before? If I've been there before, well, I know the place. If I haven't been there before, then I'll do a little bit of extra research. Um, and then another thing I consider is, because I'm a big walker, I like walking, I try and find a accommodation that's in the CBD or close to the things that I want to do because mm-hmm. that saves on transport costs as well. Yep. So really think about what you're going to do when you're there. So, you know, do you need to be in the city? Then you might... It might be worth paying a little bit of extra to get a hotel or, you know, a Airbnb or whatever it might be closer to where the action is and then you can walk around. And, you know, that's healthy one and it's also saving money. So, um, yeah, I, I sort of do a lot of that sort of stuff before I go. I did not know about the free walking tours. I've done a lot of walking tours in, in Rome and uh Venice, Milan, Paris, but they were not they were not free. How do you find out about a free this is news to me. How do you find out about these free walking tours? You Google free walking tour Rome, free walking tour Sweden. Wherever you're going, mm-hmm. just go put that in Google. And if they've got a free walking tour, it'll come up and it'll give you a a, a, a company um and it'll tell you the times. So um, before COVID, I went to Sweden and I hadn't been there before. Um, and I put in free walking to a suite at Stockholm or mm-hmm. Sweden. And then up it came and it said, meet us here at 10 a.m. Or if you want the afternoon one, meet us here at one o'clock. And yeah, so that was just as easy as finding that. And then, yeah, you don't have to pay for it. You you don't have to book it. You just turn up. Right. And they've got great incentive to make sure that you enjoy it. And that you yes. get, you know, get a lot of good information and local lore. I, I like mm. that a lot. The, the walking tours I've been on, they were local guides, even though I may have been with a big group. And they just really add to it with their personal anecdotes and stories and little nooks and crannies they might take you to that you wouldn't otherwise see. And uh, mm. also they give you some good pointers. We're going to talk about safety later, about things to mm avoid if you're just friendly and and talk to them so this is Mm. this is exciting what about we talked a little bit about the uh using your credits for the airlines but what about before you get to the point of credits using your airline points and miles to fly for free any tips on how to how to do that yeah so i would say bank up your points so there's a lot of opportunity to use them on smaller, long, uh, short haul trips, so domestic trips. But what you've got to do for me personally, what I want to do is I want to get best bang for my buck with the points. So mm-hmm. I bank them up for a long haul trip, say, say to London or to Europe. You'll get a lot of airlines saying, oh, you know, let's go domestic. 
um, interstate, but I, I sort of stop myself from doing that and bank them up. So what I do with the points, I have a credit card attached to my frequent flyer program and I put everything on my credit card, everything that you would normally use with cash, I use credit card. Then what I do at the end of the month, I'll get my statement and I'll pay it off in full. And I consistently do that every month. Um, in Australia, we have a really fabulous program connected to this loyalty program mm -hmm. where we get where we get points for shopping, food shopping. Oh. So you're doing you're doing food wow. shopping every week. So this program is fantastic. Not only do you get points for food shopping, I'm getting double points because I'm getting it on the credit card as well. So I'm getting double points to do my food shopping, which is a no-brainer. You've got to eat and get your food shopping. Um, another thing what I try and do is I'll look at the hotels and the travel companies that are affiliated with the, the Break and Fly program. Mm -hmm. And if they're affordable and competitive in price, I will use those because, again, I'm getting double and triple points. So continually doing this, I'll pay bills on the credit card, I'll buy supermarket shopping, I'll do everything on the credit card. It's very, the points build up very quickly. I and within no, within no time, you have enough to go, um, you know, I think I, it doesn't take me long, but I mean, I think I've got enough now to go business class to London in oh. my points. Nice, nice. And, and of course, and it's, we, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so you just, it's a no-brainer. It's like, you know, when you're banking, you're putting, saving your money in the bank. It's just a similar sort of transaction. You get paid, you pay your credit card, and then the points follow. Um, you pay an annual fee to have these reward credit cards, but if you utilise them well, the money, you're going to get your money back. It's yes. And I, I yeah. think uh, I like, too, that you emphasise that you pay off you know, the credit card each mm. month, because that's where some people will get into trouble is if they don't, then it, you know, with the interest and all of that, then it's not worth it. But if you're a disciplined person, then that really mm. is a good way. And there are still cards out there. There are not as many as there used to be, but there are still good cards out there that will uh, help you build points such as you describe. And mm -hmm. I really like the way you use that. I hadn't really thought about baking them up. I just, as soon as I get enough, I, you know, want to use them and go on a trip somewhere. But that mm -hmm. it really doesn't, especially now, because it used to be dollar for dollar way, mm -hmm. way back in the day. But it is, it's not that anymore. So it really does uh, make sense to use them and, and look at the airlines and the hotels and all of that for ways that you can build points up. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm love learning. I'm learning good stuff here to help me have better balance of life because I like to work and I like to play. So mm. how do you get nice hotels and resorts at discounted prices? We've talked about the airfare and the flying. What about mm -hmm. the hotels and resorts? So travel in low and shoulder season because their capacity, they've got a lot of capacity. Another thing that you can also do, which is something that I do, is sign up to the mailing lists for the airlines and the travel providers. What normally happens is when they've got low um, occupancy at the hotel, they'll have a sale. And it's usually in low and shoulder season. So that's another incentive to travel at that time because if they haven't got a lot of customers, what do they do? They have a sale to generate customers, and so they drop their prices. Yeah. So that, my, that, that occupancy, got it. Yeah, so that's another big tip. What I would say to all the listeners, if you've got a favourite airline or a favourite hotel chain or you might have a number of hotel chains that you like, sign up, you know, and, and get those emails regularly from them because they're going to save you money too. How how do you get through them though? But there's there so many newsletters that I, I didn't even sign up for in the first place. <laughs> you know that I just might have gone on their site or entered a competition, and then you have these coming. Do you do you route them to a folder or just yes? You only look when you're thinking about going on a trip. 
So I route them and I call my Outlook um, folder travel and they all go into that folder. Um, and, you know, if I'm in the, if, if I'm going to be booking something, then I'm going to obviously pay a bit more attention to those ones that they send me every week mm-hmm. and have a look. Um, but, yeah, I throw everything into a folder and then when I need it, it's in there. Um, but it's just about keeping um, a, keeping in um, up to date with what's happening in the travel. So for me, you know, with my blogging and, and also things that I do, I'm always, they're the most important emails that I read in my email box. The others have to wait, but the travel yes. ones take precedence for me um, because they give me information, but then they're also going to be handy to me to save money. So, you know, if something's going to save me money, then it's the top of the list of the emails I read. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want value. I like quality, but I want value. I have no time or money to to waste. And I'm glad you mentioned your blog. I was on your site and you blog not too long ago about five unplanned travel events and how to handle them. It was it was a really yes. great blog. And two that grabbed my attention, particularly were damaged bags and flight delays. How do you mm. deal with those incidents? What's your advice? So damaged bags or delayed bags for that matter, what you need to do, the tip with that is you need to report it immediately. So if your bag arrives in uh, different places, like I've got on my blog, you go immediately to baggage services for your airline and it's at the airport. And I know that the people want to just get out of the airport and get to their hotel. Mm-hmm. My big tip is go to that baggage services, show them the damage that's done to the bag. You take photos yourself and what they'll do is they'll raise a case for you immediately. Obviously, then you need to email them, you know, within a a set period of time and then, you know, give them the documentation like receipts and all that sort of stuff. A big mistake that I've found is people go, oh, I'll just do that later. Really? See, that, that's surprising to me because I immediately yeah. want someone to be aware, like my vehicle or something. I want somebody to know that this has happened. I, that's that's surprising to me. Yeah, so I, I've known of people that go, you know what, I just want to get to my hotel. I'll do this later. The longer you leave it, there's only a set amount of time that airlines will allow you to report your bag damaged. Oh. If you, ex- if you exceed that period... There's nothing they can do for you. There's no recourse for you. So it's really about if you're on the on the spot, take photos so you've got the evidence, report it immediately, get them to raise a case, and then you've got that extra time, maybe a week or two weeks, to support, send the other supporting documents and for them to look at it after. Yeah. So that's a big tip for me. Um, the same with delayed bags. Go directly to the baggage services and report it immediately. Because you could be up, you could actually be entitled to compensation if a bag's delayed, but you're not going to know that until you speak with them. Um, as far as um, flight delays, it depends on the airline and it depends on how long you're delayed. Mm-hmm. So if you're on a flight that's the last flight of the day, that airline ha- by by law have to give you accommodation. Usually they'll offer it, but if they don't offer it, you need to ask for it. Is that because, is, does that apply in the United States? Because I'm I'm hearing people saying there's been in the nights at at airports now. Is that everywhere, or is that certain countries? Well, I don't know, but I was delayed in Honolulu with an Australian airline, and they gave accommodation. They offered the accommodation. So, and, and that that's America, but I'm not sure. Maybe it goes on the airline, but. If you're delayed for an amount of time, you're entitled to something. So it's about, (laughs) yeah, you know, Um, because, I mean, I was delayed, I think it was at a Honolulu for about, I think it was eight hours. So I was supposed to get a a flight in the morning and and actually it was 12 hours, that's right, it was in the morning and they weren't going to fly for another 12 hours. They gave us hotel accommodation for that 12 hours. They provided meals and transportation. Um. And it, but but if you were overnight, I don't know about America, but in Australia, they they you've got to offer you accommodation, and they've wow. got to bring you, give you money to bring you back to that airport in the morning. A few years ago, my sons and I were stranded in New York, uh, 
missed our flight and was it a flight delay? I can't remember. They were they were teens, so it was some time ago. But I thought that they would give us vouchers or something for a hotel. And there were a lot of people there. So it, it must have been something with the airline because there were a lot of people. And the reason I remember it, because I've had a lot of travel nightmares, the reason I remember it is that they gave us pieces of cardboard to sleep mm -hmm. on the floor in the airport. And I mean, they had a system for this, piles and mm -hmm. piles of cardboard that they were carrying it, car uh, passing out. And that, that was the trip where I learned not to pack my uh, chargers in my luggage mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we didn't get our luggage back. They were going to put it on whatever flight when we got ready to go out. So I couldn't use my phone. We had this mm -hmm. cardboard. It was horrible. It was, it was a really good trip other than that part of it. But we tend to, when we recall that trip, that's the part we recall. So but I wouldn't put it past some airlines that if you didn't know your rights, that they might mm. try something like that if you weren't able to say. So that, that's something I'm going to do. You put that on my mind to find out. I know their rights about you not being able to, they can't just leave you sitting on the tarmac and no food or mm. drink and all of that. But I'm wondering now what, what the rules actually are about that. Uh, I, I hope it's as nice as, as it is for you, for Australian airlines, but I'm not really sure about that. But so, so probably the way to find that out is go onto your airline website mm -hmm. and look under flight cancellations or delays. In the and they'll have something on that website where, where they'll, you know, um, or look at your local laws, I suppose your airline laws, with, you know, mm -hmm. depending on where you are, US. The FAA or whomever does that, yeah. Yeah, I know UK and Europe follow similar to what Australia do mm -hmm. because I've been delayed in the UK and and they actually put me up in accommodation there as well. So, But US might be a bit different. I'm not, not an expert about US airline law, but maybe I should look into it. Well, okay. Yeah, but so far everything you said is, is pretty much the same from my experience and I travel quite a bit, but that one I just don't know so you're raising awareness here and it, it's something mm. for us to to look into or to lobby for if if that's not the mm. case because it's terribly inconvenient i realize it's an expense for them but it's it's time and money for us when you can't get back to work you can't get home you're inconvenient so mm. but we'll leave that we won't get into politics we'll leave that for yes. another <laughs> time for before we talk about your your travel books and your guides and so forth, I have one last question in regards to tips for our listeners who travel and and want to travel, you know, economically. And I mean, I don't care how much money you have; you should want to get value and want to save money when you can, but also oh. safely. Uh, there have just been Linda a, a number of incidents, and I, I don't know if it's because the of media and cell phones that we're hearing more about incidents with uh, travelers, particularly women, but uh, some really, really frightening things have happened recently. So what, can you give us any tips for women's safety? Because a lot of women still, I mean, if you don't have somebody to travel with, I say, just go. I don't, I don't believe you need to wait for a group because it's hard to find everybody with the same amount of, with the time and the money that may fit your schedule. But how can we do so, enjoy the world, and but do it safely? Yeah, there's a number of things. Um, and a lot of this is common sense as well, Dr. Mo, but um, don't travel alone at night, which is, is, especially if you're a woman by yourself. Also, another thing, try to get flights that arrive in the daytime. Don't get ones that arrive at night. I mean, sometimes flights, you... Flights yeah. that arrive in the daytime, okay. Yes, because it's safer. Um, sometimes it's not possible. But what I try and do is get book flights that arrive in the daytime because okay. that's going to be safer. Um, one other thing, don't draw attention to yourself when you travel. So, you know, you might be in a new place. You might be in a poorer place. Don't wear your jewellery. Don't wear expensive don't have expensive belongings. Try and go as casual as you can. Look at what the locals are wearing. Mm -hmm. Are they going coming walking around in, in shorts and t-shirt? Then do the same. 
um, you know, we, we love our belongings, you know, our jewellery and, and all those lovely things. Yeah, and our but bags try to keep and <laughs> flashes yes. and sunglasses, right. But it makes you so a try, target is what you're saying. Yeah, so what I do when I go, I've got like a, a two or three dollar pair of sunglasses that I take with me and I wear them because they're not they're not expensive. I leave my expensive one for around the pool or whatever, you know, like that. Um so yeah, I would just not wear any of the belongings. Um also don't take a big handbag out with you also. So just have like a smaller, I think you call them fanny, fanny packs. Mm-hmm. Um, we call them bum bags, but wear those. Um, and don't put them on your back because if you've got them on your back, someone can rob you from the back. So it's always have everything in the front of you. And you don't, um, you don't even realize it. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, also, don't tell anyone where you're staying. So if you've just met someone while traveling, don't tell them your hotel room number and don't tell them where you're staying because it's a real security risk. Sometimes you can just be feel comfortable with people and tell, and they might say, oh, where are you staying? Um, and then, you know, they might ask your room number. That's the big no-no. Just don't do it. If you're meeting people, you've met people while you're travelling, meet them down in the lobby. You know, you can tell them where you're staying, but meet them down in the lobby because then they don't know, one, where you, what your room is and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, another big thing, and I think this is just common sense, and oh, but you would do it in your own home as well, mm-hmm. be really observant and notice what's going on around you. Right. So. You know, unfortunately, the world is can be unsafe for women, even where you live, you know, especially at night. Um, but be really observant. So, you know, if you're in an ATM or, for instance, taking out money, you might be shopping, don't do it on a footpath with people walking past because you're, mm-hmm. you're, you could be a target for somebody and they're saying, oh, look at this person going through all their money and then they could follow you and rob you. So what my suggestion is, if you need to look at a map, you need to pull some money out of your, you, you know, your little bag. Do it inside a shop where there's not enough as many as many people. Ah. So it's just about constantly being prepared about what you're going to do next. So you're going to go shop, get your money out, have it handy, so you're not, you know, going through your bag. Because the longer time you take to do things, the more opportunity there is for people to look at. And, and see what you're doing. Um, around airports, what I would say is don't use the ATMs at the airports because they are a breeding ground for thieves. People go through the airports looking for tourists and opportunities. So what you should try and do is get your money maybe before you leave. So mm-hmm. maybe and that's another thing. Don't ever get it at the airport because they're not going to give you a good exchange rate right. either for the money. Try and prepare yourself um, and so and, and then also avoid um, leaving your money or belongings unattended. I mean, this is a no-brainer and common sense, but don't leave your your luggage and your your money and your bags unattended. Oh, I'm just gonna go to that shop to buy something. No, take it with you. Right. It, it's it might like be inconvenient. Will, will relax their guard sometimes. I don't know what it is, yeah. but you know, they're in this paradise and people are being friendly and smiling at them and, and don't speak their mm-hmm. language. And, and so they just kind of let their guard down sometimes. And and you you would like you say, you wouldn't do that at home. When I, I pull into my garage at night, I let the garage down before I get out of the car, you know, and that's here in my very relatively safe neighborhood. But so we yeah. need to keep up that those same practices and just be alert and aware of who's around us. And, and good tip yeah. about not telling people where you're staying, because I, I think I might have made that mistake because people ask, well, where are you staying? And you just say and you don't even you don't even think about it, that that could be there could be a nefarious reason that they're asking you. Yeah. And another thing in the hotel, don't use the hotel safe. Don't use it because. What? The, the, the thing about the hotel safe is every employee in that hotel has the master key to that safe. Oh. To unlock it. So you're better off if you've got luggage and you've got a lock on there and you've got other little bags that are locked, get your money and put it in those, those areas. Do never, don't ever use the safe because most people working in a hotel are, are very honest but then there are people that might not be so honest. 
And I've heard of people getting money and belongings stolen out of site, hotel sites. So always remember that every single employee has a master key to get into that hotel safe. I did not know that. Uh, this yes. is the first time I've heard that. And I, I thought I figured the management did or security, but I did mm. not know everyone has a key. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, most people are honest. I'm not saying people are dishonest, but try and think about your belongings and your money and take it seriously. And, and you have control of how secure they are. Don't let it be under someone else's security, you know. Um, and I've never used a hotel safe. I've always done that. I, I split my money. I don't have it all in one right, spot. Right. And, and you, you, you're talking about risk, aren't you? So it's, you're eliminating the risk. If some, one bag was to get stolen, then you're not, all your money's not gone. You, have you know what I mean? So, yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, touch wood. You don't even want to lose anything, right? But you've got to be really smart about it. Yeah, that's devastating. I, I haven't had it happen to me, knock on wood, thank thank God. But I know people, I've been with people that has happened to, whether it was luggage and they had, for whatever reason, put valuables in there or, you know, getting robbed or losing a backpack. And it really just mm. dampens the whole trip. It's really hard to hard to recover from that emotionally even if you can you know get some more money for whatever reason it it really just you know makes it hard bad for everybody yeah well before we go the and these have been some really great tips I've had I I look for those aha moments and I've had a couple Linda thank you so much but in -hmm. addition to your blog that we mentioned you have written travel books like Antics Abroad and the Smart Travelista Guides Tell us about your books. Uh, I saw one about how to travel with uh, food allergies, and I'm lactose intolerant. So Mm. uh, to my surprise, that was more of an issue in in France than in Italy. And Mm. I hadn't, even before going, knowing that I had a food allergy, I hadn't thought about it. So you've got some really, I looked through several of them. You've got some great information that you are are providing for people. Share how people can learn about your blogs and books and get all this great information. Yeah, so I've got five books in the um, Smart Travelista Guides and I'm also allergy sufferer, food allergy sufferer. So that was the reason I wrote that book because it was a book that I was looking for and that wasn't out there. And I've obviously um, also had people come to me about it. So I, I started off blogging about it and then someone said, I would really love a book about this. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to write about it. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so, yeah, so How to Travel with Food Allergies, it's a great little book. Um, also How to Protect Your Travel Health and Safety. So we've been talking about safety. That's about some of those tips and also how to keep healthy. Um, how to increase your airline loyalty points, so airline miles and fly for free. So, again, around those airline miles. Um, the best overseas bargain shopping. Shopping is my favourite, so I had to write about shopping um, at overseas destinations. And the first book in the series is about how to find those travel bargains and managing your budget. So it's around, you know, doing that online thing and, and also the tips around that. Um, and Annex Abroad was it is a book about my travel adventures. So people that I've met. And when we we travel, things go great, but things don't go so great. So the book's about things that have gone wrong uh, for me and others when we've travelled because they're the most entertaining stories, I think. You don't want to read a book about someone that's had a, a flawless, perfect trip because that's boring. When it gets really interesting is when things go wrong. So um so, yeah, that's about that book. But those books are available on Amazon. People can um, go on Amazon and, and Google um, Annex Abroad or the Smart Travelista Guides. But if you go on my website, I've got information about the books as well. So there's links there. But um, what I try and do with the books, I try to entertain people with my stories, but also give them informative and helpful tips. So you've, you've looked on my blog. I try and do a blog articles that are helpful and give tips same in the books you know it's it's about different topics and and strategies and ways to save money because at the end of the day Dr Mo the more money we can save the more travel we can do and that's always a good thing in my books 
Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I want to tell you, I don't do hosteling or Airbnb. I do in a certain quality, so certain travelling in, certain, in, in a quite a good quality, but it's how you do that cheaply, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, but, yeah, that's probably a little bit about my books. If people are interested, they can check it out. I'll, I'll add that. I always add a link to the guest uh, website in the show notes, and they can go from there to your to your books. I'm sure on Amazon they can read an excerpt if they like. But uh, what I've seen, I truly enjoyed. And as I've learned a lot, I'm, I've signed up for your newsletter and your travel updates, and I'm looking forward to traveling uh in the Linda King style and the Travelista style going forward. Thank you so much for these wonderful tips that you shared. I, I wish we had more times to talk about some of your stories about things that, <laughs> that didn't go so well, because I bet those are entertaining, but folks can read about those annex in your books. And I just am so grateful for you that we worked out the time difference and, and all mm-hmm. of that, because it's, it's Thursday here, but I believe it's, it's Friday morning there. So it's Thursday yes. here. So it's all worked together for good. And our time travel across this digital media has been quite a wonderful experience for me. Thank you so very much. My pleasure, Dr. Mo. Hopefully I've given everyone some really good tips and some ideas. And wasn't that a great program? Oh, love that episode. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Learn more about me on my website, drmoanderson.com. That's M-O-E. You can read book excerpts, watch videos, learn about my services that I offer, and book me for a speaking engagement. I'd love to talk with your group, and I'd love to work with you. So until the next time, review, renew, and re-you. Thank you.